<laughs> Wendy. All right, mate. You're on. It looks like I've got, I've got a halo. <laughs> of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Wendy has Jesus on his side. We all knew this. We all knew this. First of all, absolute pleasure, gents. We're going to be joined by, I think Gina's going to be here now already. Right, so Gina's here. No Gary Histed, unfortunately. <sighs> but bye bye. we've got the lovely Gina. Absolute pleasure. Thank you, chaps, for joining the round table. We are currently don't have a Kenny Poger here. Uh, he's not answering. He has just uh, had a baby girl yesterday. Well, not, not him personally. Uh, his mm-hmm. wife had a baby girl. Uh, yeah. So Kenny isn't currently answering me. He may come on. It's, as you can imagine, if they've only just had a baby, mm-hmm. uh, it could be chaos, couldn't it? It could be uh, that they've had no sleep and everything. So the last thing he wants to do is come on this, but you never know. He, he, he may under still any, under any circumstances. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're, oh, you're oh, a bugger. He's a Spurs fan, so he's probably had more restless nights following Tottenham than having a baby. Very true. Very true. Very true. Yeah. There, Matt. I'm surprised. So, I'm surprised he didn't postpone it. Actually. Ooh. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, a little bit of comedy there. Right. So first, first few <laughs> introductions. Right. We got we got three new people on on tonight. So first of all, let's do from what I my perception is I've got Windy John uh, up on the top left, which is not going to be the top left to everyone else probably. But um, please, John, it's an absolute pleasure. I've been ages trying to get you on. So could you just say what made you fall in love with Hastings? Basically, if you for for everyone listening and watching out there. Well, well, basically, I've been going up Pilot Field since the first game I can remember is nineteen sixty eight, but. Um, I think I was dragged up. Oiler Yule, Oiler Yule, you don't look that old, John. <laughs> a bit earlier than that, and I've been going up there ever since, really. Um, mostly, I mean, I was up there every weekend in the seventies. I missed some of the eighties, sadly, because that was probably, especially at the end, it was near the end of the eighties. So it's probably one of their best periods. But uh, yeah, that's yeah, always been there, no matter which what title they were called, as long as it was a pilot field, not Stamco. <laughs> <laughs> it mattered. So, yeah, that's me. All right. Okay. Uh, well, it's an absolute pleasure you're here. Now, and I, could... as you may know, some of you might know, my dad took me up there, and he he was he was up there from 1952 until he died to, to 18 months ago. So there you go. And he probably saw more, com, you know, proper seasons than I did. That's for sure. Yeah. He had the, he had the pleasure of the 50s. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Saying that, I'm talking history tomorrow with Leon oh. Hastings history. So Ooh. I will bring up the fifties because it's that's, that's quite a lot happening. But right, so moving on, yeah, we're going to move on to the next person I can see, which is Matt. Uh, Matt, if it's just just introduce yourself uh, and how you fell in love, started following Hastings. So literally. <laughs> Been a Spurs fan down here. We've always come and watched the sort of Tottenham teams that have been down at Pilot Field. Um, my little boy Dylan, who some of you might sort of clock from my posts, he's a, a aspiring goalkeeper. So in October, we, we went down there just to watch a goalkeeper. We had no intention of sort of joining the Hastings clan or anything. Yeah. We, we went in there, we watched the game, we watched Louis intently. And uh, I was expecting there to be about 150 people or something like that. It used to be years ago when I used to go on the odd occasion. And we were just blown away, you know. Five o'clock, we left. We walked out the gates. But spiritually, we never really left. We've done pretty much every home game since. Done a few away games. Everyone we've met has just been so sort of supportive and so engaging and engrossing. that We just feel like we've become a part of this family we never knew we had. And frankly, we're loving it. Excellent. Great stuff, yeah. It is definitely a family. Talk to the family. We've also got the lovely Gina. Gina's here. He's she isn't with Gary, but she's enough. She's enough. We don't need Gary. Gina, tell us, tell us, my love, uh, how you first started going to watching Hastings. My first game was the Middlesbrough game. Oh, okay. And then I've been going to odd games with Gary, but this this season I've been going to every game, home and away. This is true. I used and to I see also it. help out on the turnstiles as well. So, yeah, I was going to say, just for anyone that doesn't know, Gina, Gary, all help out volunteer. They do tons 
of stuff around for for nothing, for nothing, uh, for the joy of watching Hastings. Um, uh, so, my hats off to you, my love. Um, shall we? Should we just kick straight into Wits the Ball now? I think it was just me and Gina, the only ones that went to Wits the Ball. Am I right? Yeah, I was. Yeah. There. I was. I was listening to Radio C- Carter. <laughs> yeah, well, I was hoping. Yeah. I was hoping Radio Carter was going to turn up, but Radio Carter's gone gaga. I was going to plug all of his stuff. I'll just have to do it without him. So, and we can slag him off now, can't we? Let's be honest. No, no, we won't do that. So it's just me and Gina that went. I was, I was hoping for a little bit of input from Adam as well. So Gina, any of your thoughts about the game and how it went? I think the pitch was a bit bubbly, a bit bumpy. Mm. And but they had some good chances in the first half, especially from Cisse. Yeah, he, he had a good game, didn't he? It's yeah. Cisse's really come on that last sort of three games. He's he's just been a nightmare for other teams, hasn't he? Yeah, I think he's improved a lot since his first game. Yeah, I mean, wasn't it? I can't remember my my. I thought was it like the first minute or like the fifth minute that we he was clean I think through. It was the third minute. Was it? Was it our third minute? Yeah. And I was thinking, oh, what a perfect start. But, you know, it was like a quagmire, that pitch. Um, yeah, so for, for obviously for those that were listening to Adam's wonderful commentary, I don't know if he got across the fact that it was a bit SOM-like. Uh, it was a very turgid pitch, um, very heavy. A few things to take from it. Firstly, that the Whitstable fans were excellent. They, they sung their hearts out for their team, even though the team... Well, played better than they did when they were at the pilot field. Because, I mean, I know I've said to, you, to yourself, Andy, mm. uh, Whitstable were the worst team I've seen this season. At they were they were our sort of um, leg up after Agatha went, weren't they, that game? That was that was the, our sort of free hit after Agatha had gone, which was very, very useful at the time. Yeah, they were shocking. And, and to, yeah. to be honest, I don't know if you agree with me, Gina, but I, I thought that Whitstable really gave it a go, didn't they? Yeah, they were... They, I actually thought... At one point, they were the better side, but then... Controversial, but, controversial there. But, <laughs> like, you know, um, like in the first half, second half, mm. first part of the second half, they came out to fight back. Oh, yeah, they did. And, and, it, and it took the fact that... I remember, because I remember Robbie saying to me, just so you know, like, Robbie, who hasn't turned up either, he was supposed to be here. He's obviously injured. That's what is he's he, Is playing. he mobile now, then? He's on crutches. Ah, uh, OK. And he... um. Well, it was quite funny. We I, I got there about twenty to two, uh, twenty past two, sorry. And Robbie said to me, "Chris, don't buy me any beers. Yeah, I'm off the beer." And he was drinking um, a Seven Up. And I said, "I'll give that five minutes, uh, Robbie." And then he goes, "Like five minutes later, oh, Chris, give me a beer." It was uh, so you know the, the, that was his pain medication. <laughs> but um, <laughs> we 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 were trying to find different things for him to sit on um, because. So he would sit with us because he was going to sit in a main stand. No finer place. Exactly. <laughs> but we would have lost him forever, Andy. We would have lost him forever. I've and... welcomed him with open arms. Guy could have had he could have half my prawn sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so he, yeah, he was just behind us and um, very quiet. He was very very reserved. Uh, Robbie, he, he didn't even sing, Gina. No, but he did comment about the um, ball catch of the referee. This is true. Because he had a superior angle. Thank you. Well, well, well remember, Gina. Because he was higher up in the stand, he was able to see down onto the ball patch of the ref, at which he did pick it out. He says, you know, ref, you're trying to hide that ball patch, but from this angle, I see everything, and uh, which was quite entertaining. Was he sitting next to Adam in this second half? I think he, from, from the commentary, I think he might have been. Adam definitely had someone join him in the second half. So and, he, he and his name was, him. yeah, it was Rob, but I didn't know if it was oh, Rob okay. or Rob, Rob French or someone else. But whoever it was was helping Adam out a little bit with the commentary. Yeah. And it, it actually, it was really good. Really good. Adam did brilliant, but I thought um, with Robbie's, whoever Robbie was. <laughs> no, it would have go, been Robbie. It, uh, this was first half. This is what me and Gina talked about, yeah. talk about first half. <laughs> second half. Maybe, maybe I, w- I was too lost in the game by then. Um, <laughs> but the atmosphere sounded drunk, great on the radio. Know. Atmosphere sounded really good on the radio. Didn't it? it really Hopefully. did. Yeah. Yeah, we're Whitstable fans were brilliant. I mean, I don't know if you agree with Gina, but they, they were, they were singing, <laughs> even though their team was quite 
not that good. And even when we scored, they started being, they carried on. And when we were walking back uh, after the game, they were very good about us, about the team. They were glad that, you know, that we're doing well. It was really... Uh, they even shook your hands as well at the end. Yeah, and, and which was interesting because the last time we went now, I do believe... It uh, chased around you. <laughs> some, fans, some fans were assaulted. Uh, and I think, I think, didn't the goalie... Wasn't that, was that, was that what Lee, wasn't that when Lee got punched by the goalie? Am I thinking of a different game, Gina? No, I think that's happened a few times with Whitstable with a bit of trouble. What I was saying is about three or four years ago, I remember, mm. I, didn't, I didn't go to the game, but I can remember some of the lads saying that they'd been, and they got sort of run back to the station by some locals who were waiting outside. Mm. Yeah, I, obviously, things have changed, so there you go. Well, it was good. I mean, they, there was banter. Yeah. Uh, I, I can't really repeat some of the songs that were sung back back and forth to each other, but they were very entertaining. I'll give you that. They was good banter. Yeah, it's good. And I'll, I may I may mention it on Saturday, and you might find it funny, but not. They even not... had security. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, they had, they had bouncers there, didn't they? Dad. Yeah. Was it? Ask Adam. Them? Ask Adam. He had some security. Give him some grief. Well, well, that's it. I, I mean, I don't know if you know about this, Gina. I, I don't even know about this, guys, but like. Obviously, Adam is trying to do the commentary. Actually, for the chaps that were listening, tell us tell us what it sounded like. It sounded brilliant. It's hilarious. It was really funny. It was, um, you know, Adam, he comments that he's impartial, but he's obviously quite excited being a Hastings fan. Yeah. And, you know, when Hastings on the attack, he's obviously a bit louder and a bit more like on the edge of his seat. And yeah. there was obviously someone sat a few rows in front of him who, who wasn't too, too happy about having the match commentated from behind him. Yeah. But um, I think someone had passed on to this guy that it was for the Conquest Hospital radio as well as the website. And he seemed to chill his boots a little bit at that point and kind of yeah. understand that, oh, OK. Yeah, I think it went somewhere along the lines of, I hope you're not going to be making that much noise all the way through the game, mate. <laughs> and Adam turned around and said, why? He said, well, I yeah, yeah. had a few complaints from the old ladies at the front. <laughs> but this is what we, happened. It wasn't a library, though, was it? <laughs> yeah. this, this is what happens when you sit in a main stand, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's, the, it's the, the upper echelons of society yeah. sit up there and they don't want to hear any noise, do they? We don't like it. I have to say, it is irritating. So I, I still remember the Cray Valley game. There was some absolute toss pot sat just behind me who was, who I think he was with the bloke who was doing the sort of, he was the Cray Valley PM, um, Bob Quinn sat behind mm. us. And his mate, the mighty who, Bob Quinn, the mighty Bob Quinn, and he, mm. his mate was really mouthy, really mouthy. And when you're losing, and there's a mouthy opposition fan behind you, it's very, <laughs> very hard to sort of just grit your teeth and be all sort of um, non-league football matey with him. That's so a bit of main main stand aggro. So Is that what you're gig. saying, Andy? Yeah, it's a tough gig. Almost flip to what's it? Eh? <laughs> it didn't stop my <laughs> it didn't stop my dad, mate. <laughs> yeah. It, it does, it does, yeah, it does stick a bit, yeah. Well, yeah, so yeah. obviously Adam's had to suffer these capers, uh, but he, <laughs> he, he soldiered through it, and by the sounds of it, he tried to stay as professional as he could, so... Um, he, was, he was brilliant, he really was. Mm. Yeah. And, and Andrew, uh, you can already see an improvement from the first two or three games that he's done, so he's, mm -hmm. he's you know, he's, he's cut out the uh, Ben Pope, the blah, blah, the blah, blah, it's all surnames. Saves him a bit of breath, you know. <laughs> he's getting there. He's doing great. Yeah. He's doing really, really good. I, I find with the commentary that he's, he's really descriptive and he's very, you know, he describes the match really well. Yeah. But yeah. when you listen to like a main football, they, there's always two, aren't there? So you, you mm. sort of dine in on their conversation, that sort of flip flop and banter. So I think obviously doing that on your own, it's impossible to have that conversation bit. But he does really well to try and infill every little bit that he can. He's doing a really good job. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I, I have to say, I prefer a, where there's some, a moment where you can bounce off people. So to soldier on on your own, I'll give him absolute yeah, kudos totally. to, it's you know what I mean? It's really but, uh, and as he goes, obviously, things will... He was, I'll get... tell you something else as well. He was updating, uh, updating us all with the um, scores from the rest of the games around the league. Mm. 
which oh, you know, right. not ev- not everybody's connected to it. You know, FWP or whatever it is you list you're looking at, and it, you know, it's good. Ways to kill dead time, uh, dead air as well. Yeah. You know, he's exactly, getting yeah. there and he's getting there. He is. Profesh- he is. Yeah, professional. Yes. Um, it, but he's so professional, he hasn't bothered turning up. So, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, he's a I think he's moved on, Chris. Moved oh, I, on. I'm just, yeah. I'm just, yeah. I'm, he's on talk, he's on talk sport. And I'm yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> Down at um, Brighton. <laughs> so, so, yeah, with, so with the game, obviously, second half, as Gina was saying, slightly squeaky bum, I felt. But with the defence as it is, I'm not sure if Gina agrees. I don't know how it come across on commentary, but just... Uh, again, Omara, uh, even Oli Black, Oli Black that came back, just sound. There was just there wasn't there wasn't that we weren't you weren't scared you weren't thinking Christ they're, they're going to score. It was just I mean Omara is just a top, just a top player. It's a, it's so great that we got him in the, the team. It's just made such a difference. It's huge. Him and Craig Stone have almost water tight at the back, aren't they? I think in the game since Finn's joined, we've conceded goals in two or maybe three games out of what eight, nine, ten, or something. Is yeah. mental. And uh, he's, he's not giving away many yellow cards either. So no, nah, and he's scoring as well, isn't he? You know, yeah, he scored so. against Whitehawk. He scored four, I think, maybe or not. The, the overhead against Faversham was just yeah. that counts for two at least. And <laughs> some, yeah, totally. <laughs> And they're well, yeah. both very, very good footballers as well. They're, they're, they can both they can both play, and that that's that does make a difference. I think the first time I saw him play, he was moving. As soon as he got the ball, he was moving. He's so such so just just not your standard centre half in that sense. He's, they're, they're both. I mean, Stones a very, very good footballer, and the, and he compliments him, and that they 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 can do it all. Like as I think, as we said last time out, it just. It didn't even matter that Elphick retired himself once Omara arrived. Yeah, right. that, that's, we didn't even notice Elphick retiring. That's that's the b- biggest compliment you can pay him, really. Yeah, there no, must it's... have been a conversation that is said that if Gary's going to step out, they've got to get someone who mm. can sort of step into that role. And I don't know if Craig knows him from his Gillingham sort of connections or not, because he came through the ranks there, didn't he, Finn? But that there's... I reckon there's been a conversation where I said, let's get someone who's on that level who can come in and it's been faultless, isn't it? Mm. G- Gina, I don't know if you remember this, but one of the things we talk about, Craig Stone, I'm amazed he finished the game. Do you remember that challenge that that, that fella put yeah, in on he, him? When he went on, right on his back. Unbelievable. We didn't, get, we didn't get anything for it. It was a ridiculous challenge. And we could, I actually heard it thump on the floor from where we were standing. Yeah. It's I remember Santa Gary, they could have broke his back then. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you've seen, I don't know if you saw, has, has anyone seen the video of the Stone Challenge? No. Anyone? No, just oh, in the goal. Just in the goal, goal that's all. But if you go onto Craig Stone's Twitter and just check the challenge out, and he, and like, he didn't get any, it should have been a penalty. Should have been a penalty, yeah? Clear penalty. And how he carried that game on after that, because he come down heavy, didn't he, Gina? It was always... Yeah. Oh, well, you heard it thump on the floor. Yeah. Ooh, uh, ooh, uh, ooh, uh. <laughs> Hang on, what do we hear thump on the floor? Hang on, sorry, sorry, I'm going double entendre there. He's back. He's back. <laughs> it wasn't. It wasn't Ollie Black. So, um, <laughs> sorry, going to the old Willie jokes there. Sorry. Right. So, um, right. Yeah, and then w- we couldn't get a goal, but then the King Pogue. King Pope turns up with an absolute cultured finish and then all hell broke loose, didn't it? Mm. Gina. Yeah. Everyone yeah. Was singing. Yeah, we were singing. I, I grabbed someone and tried to throw them in the air. Um, Frank Stone. Uh, no, <laughs> <laughs> no, he, was, he was still lying on the floor. Yeah, so uh, Adam, we've got, we've got Matt, we've got Wendy, we've also got Andy and we've got the lovely Gina here. Um. Yeah, so what we we were just getting on about the, actually we go a bit to your commentary, but we were just saying about that Craig Stone challenge. Should have been a penalty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I I'll be honest with you. When I was doing the commentary, I couldn't see it because there was a bar in my way. Oh, hello, oh. Arsene. Arsene <laughs> is back. Ah, <laughs> oh. I was unsighted. Yeah, very good. Is that a Bovril bar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. He's down there having a Bovril. That's it. <laughs> So I missed it, but no, it was all right. It was I saw the replays of it, and my goodness, 
yeah, we've just, me and Gina were just saying he absolutely just thumped on that ground, didn't he, after that challenge? Yeah, yeah. But I think the, the ref had the same problem I did. I don't think he could see it. So, Adam, we've spoken about your little tete-a-tete with the main stand of Whitstable. I mean, did you want to give your words on it? Um, what, the uh, situation with the jobs worth um, steward? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So I'm sitting there. I'm a few minutes into it. I'm getting excited when sort of Hastings nearly score. And then he comes up and he sort of says to me, he goes, you're not going to be doing that all game, are you? I went, well, yeah, I'm on the radio. I will be doing it all game. And he went, well, do it quietly because you're annoying people. And then everybody else started chiming up and going, he's not annoying me. He's not annoying me. And then, of course, right in front of me was um, uh, was Hayley and uh, Billy and all that lot. And, uh, yeah, and then this um, scout that I was talking to before the game was sort of sat the other side of me. And he turned around and went, oh, he's just being a complete jobs worth, mate. He says... You know, they have to get used to people coming in and doing commentary and stuff if they want to go up the leagues. I mm. went, look at their position. They don't want to go up. <laughs> <laughs> but, Helpful. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, you were kind then, weren't you, Anne, uh, Adam? <laughs> yeah, I was kind. I just said, yeah. OK, I doled it down a little bit and then everybody sort of spoke up for me and that. And then, yeah, but everybody was like sending me messages on Facebook of like, you know, like he's just a job's worth. Tell him to F off and all this <laughs> See, this is what we need. When you're telling the story, Adam, right, you need to right, put a little bit of salt and pepper on it. What you're supposed to say is, yeah, I told them to sod off. I'm doing this commentary, blur, you know, all that. Don't just say, oh, yeah, I was very nice, you know. Yeah, I know, but my daughter's within earshot of me. I've got to be careful of my words. Oh, okay. <laughs> I politely told them. To yeah, exactly, yeah. I slightly... Off. I slightly suggested that they could shove it up somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it was funny. Uh, it was actually really well done, Adam. And, and the fact that you just went, uh, they're on the break now. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, the golf commentator. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, three. it's par three. It's stone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I did. Don't, don't tell no one, but yes. Yeah. <laughs> that was it, yeah. Oh, Black. He froze went, with his. Any Pogue scored. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was so funny. Brilliant, yeah. mate. It was so good. Yeah. I think it would have been hilarious to the people listening because yeah, just yeah. Like, they, all of a sudden they just have a guy going, you can't do that. Fantastic. <laughs> First of all, we've got Mr. Carter on, so we're going to mention this. Your, your website for the radio is hufcradio.co.uk. Yeah, your that's it. Twitter is HUFC Radio. Yeah. And your Facebook is HUFC Radio. So please, anyone listening right now or watching, get on there on the weekend if you can't make the game. But, I mean, rather, come to the game. Yeah. And, and listen. And listen. But if you can't, please do exactly. those things. They're going to be in the links. Uh, Adam, talk about your lovely website. Yeah, it's just a, a sort of website. That lets you, it's another way to listen. It's going to be on there. Um, the reason I've set it up is because the, the on-demand stuff is going to be uploaded to there and then to the Hastings website so that it's taking less strain off the Hastings website from people listening and so on. But um, yeah, it's just there. And to the request of quite a few people, I've put a tip system in place but i'm not expecting anyone's tip it was it's just been put in because people said i should yeah it should seriously should i, I think <laughs> if there's a suggestion that for everyone who listens to a game chip in a pound or two yeah do you know i mean yeah. that's nothing is it people should should, should do that really and yeah. i think most would it's gonna yeah. be music to adam's ears yeah, yeah. yeah this is music to your ears adam uh, again <laughs> that is, that'll buy me another pot of uh bovril yeah exactly <laughs> no but honestly yeah. All of these things cost money, yeah? Like, that. what is set up, and anyone that's listening, these things cost money, yeah? So, yeah. honestly, if you can, just throw, you know... I mean, things cost me money, but no one's going to give me any money. I'm, I'm a waste of time. In terms of the actual... Um, you know the way you're lining it up these days, Adam? Is it going to yeah. be... When are you, when you going to start from it? Are you, is it going to be half two? just before kickoff that you're going to be doing it or is it going to be half one two o'clock I can't remember the last time you 
you, you were talking honest, about it. Yeah, when I first started doing it at half one, it, there was too much filler, too much time, and it just was, you know, it was t- it was too long for what was needed. So, in um, what I've decided is is that music would start at half past two, and then I would come in at quarter to three with the lineup with the other fixtures going on in the league or a cup if there's a cup game going on and just then like how the other team their latest results you know our latest results and then by the time I've done that played another song and played the um, serious song that I play when all the players come out on the pitch and then it's time to kick off so half two start 2.45 I do all the uh, lineups and stuff and yeah ready for free excellent all right and right Ooh. we did mention we, we were talking to the Whitstable game quickly though Adam I did mention about how excellent the Whitstable fans were did you have any comments on them I yeah I did um the fans in general I thought were, were absolutely great um they were they they gave us as good as they took which is very rare for for Hastings to experience you know like they you know they they had a good following they was banging they were singing they were singing songs of I heard him shouting at one point, shall we sing a song for you back to Hastings in the first half? So I thought I thought they were really good. Uh, got chatting with a couple of them down the high street. And um, but yeah, they, they, they seemed like a really nice bunch. They didn't seem like there was any negativity there. They just was like us there to support their team and have a good day. Out of interest, what was the Hastings numbers like? Because I know their sort of average attendance is sort of three, three fifty. On Saturday there was four fifty five. Is it fair to say there was probably about one fifty in Hastings doing the maths? Or I would have said there was probably more about eighty to a hundred Hastings fans there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There wasn't so many behind the goal, um, but there was quite a lot in the main stand. Uh, more spread out. It was more spread out. There was there was a gaggles. Of us, I mean, I mean, Gene, how many, how many were near us? Probably about thirty. Yeah, about thirty or forty. But there was a lot up that side in front of yeah. the main stand as well. Yeah. So, um, no, we made enough noise, didn't we, Gina? So, um, yeah. Yeah, Gary. We Gary won. That's the in. main thing. That's what, that's what I mean. Exactly. That's all that Victory matters. Victory is all that matters. Victory. And that we're seven points clear at the top. That's it. Ashford lost. That was yeah. I thought Robbie was going to fall down the stairs and break his other ankle when he <laughs> found out that they lost. <laughs> From yeah, two it's... new up as well, that's amazing. That it? was Robbie. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no, that's uh, it was first half, wasn't it, Gina? So what? Just so Adam, just so you know, right? So Robbie was higher up the stands, you know, uh, first half, and he could see the ref's ball spot, and he was telling the ref, you know, from my vantage point, I could see that ball spot, and. Um, Obviously, he went off to you. He went off to you a uh, second half, as as Wendy's told me. So, yeah, he come and sat with me. I think he, his leg was killing him a bit, and it was just like he wanted. I think he wanted to sort of hear the commentary as well, because like he goes to all the games, he doesn't get to hear it. So, and he was impressed. I, everyone I spoke to has been impressed with the commentary and stuff. So, I'm happy with that. Really good, mate. Really yeah. good. Yeah. We're all kissing your ass here. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, no Kenny Pogue. Uh, Kenny Pogue is obviously child rearing or uh, yeah, whatever it's called. I don't know. I, having only five of my own, I wouldn't know. Uh, t- so let's move on to the, uh, uh, we got the women's game. It's, um, this was, That was an away game at Dorking. I doubt anyone's been to that. No, I, I didn't go, to be honest, because um, we already had plans when it was announced and that, but it was just a friendly, but it, it was a, from, from talking to Joe Knight, who videoed it, it was a, a, a really strong performance from the Hastings women in the first half. And it was pretty much the development team in the second half. And they still managed to sort of like score a goal and like do well. So it was a good run out for the girls. I mean, it's a team that are in the same step as us. They're just in the North and we're in the South, but um yeah, it's good. So, mm. and of course, we're at home again against, oh, what's their name? We- uh, Wellham, I think it is. Welling. Uh, home. Welling, that's it. Welling yeah. on on Sunday at home. So, is that in the down. league? Yeah, that's a league game. Oh, good. I mean, it's, it's good that they got that fixture sorted because, I mean, it must be frustrating for the women's team that, you know, they're obviously going to go up to the next level they're, or they're desperate to go up to the next level where at least it'll be a little bit more organised. 
and yeah, they exactly. they get proper games every week, and you know, because this that's is it. this must be yeah. really annoying for them. Yeah, I mean that's the thing. They go up, they go, uh, they get promoted. They're facing teams like Fulham. Yeah, I'll get a few down for that. Every week that we sort of look them up on their website, they always seem to win by five goals to something. Like every week we look at like Hastings Ladies Pride every single week. It's amazing, isn't it, to score that many goals consistently? Yeah. yeah. Are they just head yeah. and shoulders above the competition in that league? <clears throat> Pretty much, yeah. What happened was is that when we started, we we sort of like we knew straight away that we was entering, uh, you know, a, a step of the pyramid that we don't deserve. So we got a load of like players in from um, from Eastbourne, um, Eastbourne Town, I think it was, and to basically, yeah, with the with the acknowledgement of getting free promotions in on the trot, and yeah, so we're one down on the way to the second, and then the third to go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we had to start at this point, so. It is yeah. what it is. So we look forward to Burgess Hill. Not going to be easy. That's what I was going to say. I mean, uh, have you seen the form league? Yeah, no, they're, they're the second in the table to us for four. They done VCD two 0 last weekend, didn't they? Yeah, and they gave us a good game VCD. Yeah, they did. They're obviously capable, didn't they, Burgess Hill? We've done them twice this season, though. Three two away in the league and one 0 in the cup away. So going for the hat trick of wins. Yeah, I think yeah. I, I think that, you know, if TC's sort of back, back up to scratch, you know, he's always been a, a sort of a bit of an Achilles heel for that team. His pace is just way faster than them. And he's normally sort of like the um, the player that sort of is, gets the assists and that. So, yeah, we, sh- we shall see. I, I personally think, you know, a draw would be welcome because I can't see Ashford getting three points again this week. So, another tough one, isn't they? Yeah. Who they got? Sorry, uh, uh, Gina, Andy, what do we think about Burgess Hill? Um, well, we yeah, they we went to the Sus- Sussex Cup game, didn't we? That was a close game. That Sussex Cup game really was. That was a, that was a game where both teams played properly, which quite surprised me on the evening actually. And they played like a proper game, and um, and they they were good. But it was, I mean, that was the game where Nor- the one thing I remember about that game is the game where Nori Scott got a full game. And it was almost like the game that I felt that turned his confidence. So that's that's the main thing I remember about Burgess Hill was that game where he uh, he skinned them a bit. They had a very very good goalie. They had a very good goalie as well, didn't they? Who was also yeah. who was also a depressingly pleasant bloke as well. He, he soaked <laughs> up all, he soaked up all the chat with um, with some aplomb, which was quite funny actually. He was he was quite I remember. Was- it's quite point. annoying. It's quite annoying, actually. Oh. You know, it just it was uh, none of the chat worked. Well, exactly. He, yeah, it was. It was really annoying. So he, he was brilliant and a really nice bloke. So mm. you know, double whammy, really. Sam <laughs> got under his skin, though. <laughs> <laughs> she did. Yes, she, she did. did. Wow. Yeah. Yes, she did. G- they, Gina. Yeah, they were. They, oh, God, they were sorry, a good team. Yeah, yeah they no, were. No. They were a good team. So, I, so I don't know. I, yeah, I didn't notice that they'd won those other games as well. So that's quite interesting, isn't it? Yeah, but just, just quickly, Nori Scott been a different player. Like uh, I'm sure the uh, Adam and Gina agree with me. But against Whitstable, I think he was fantastic defensively. Fantastic. I mean, he's just just so. I mean, I don't remember we were playing. Um, was it not Chippenham? When was it? Who did we go out to in the cup? Maidenhead. 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 Do you remember him against Maidenhead, where he looked lost? He honestly looked lost, and it's. It's such a world difference. Anyway, sorry, Gina, Burgess Seal, love. What any of your thoughts on that? I think it could be a tough one. Yeah. And as someone said about the goalkeeper, when we were trying to in, like throw our insults at him, he was taking them like a pinch of salt and answering us back at and agreeing. Yeah. No. Maybe yeah, we have to be mega nice to him, Gina. <laughs> and I remember when the, some of the fans were insulting Adam as well, Burgess Seal. Oh yeah, was that that game? Oh my god! Because that was the day. It was on the sixteenth of November, the day before my birthday. I think it was. Oh, was that when I took my top off? Yeah. 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 (laughs) He incited some younger fans to uh, start throwing abuse at him, but you did take it well, Adam. Of course I do, mate. I'm thick boned. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, of course. It took me years to get this good looking. If anything, they backed down before Adam did. <laughs> oh, yeah. They got a bit bored. Yeah. Well, and we won, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah, 1-0. Yeah. 
There yeah. you go. That's the <laughs> best way of shutting them up. But... And there was a very big Aldi next to the ground, if I remember rightly. Was it that game? Oh, that's the, yeah, that's the John Wills got nearly got lost game, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah that's, I'm trying Does to... That... Does anybody know if um, Jack Dixon's back? Oh, yeah, because he's um, suspended for a game, so he's available. Is he? And he was still on holiday three hours ago. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, yeah, that might be a reason why he's not there. But yeah. officially, officially, <laughs> I, I I seem to remember he was... He's suspended. Yeah, the, he okay. was suspended. Right, that's yeah. right. He might, might just have COVID now or something. I don't know, whatever yeah, they yeah. come up with now. No, well, on, on honeymoon, wasn't he? I mean, but again, the best thing is that we've got... A, we're back to a situation now where they've got a squad that can soak up that for yeah. all the yeah. sport for all as, as well as he's played. They've got they've got a squad that can soak that sort of thing up now, which is um and we're back to that situation having 15 players and you're not too fussed about who plays. And that's a really nice situation to be in. They're obviously the spine of the team, but around that, yeah, most players can fit in and it, it seems to be working. <clears throat> Yeah, midfield looks quite solid, doesn't it? Mm. Well, I think one of the things yeah. has been that the ma- has been a massive change is with Cisse and Nori being so good defensively as well in terms of their that they, they they harangue, harass, mm. chase back. Yep. It's such a different, honestly, it's such a difference. You know, Cisse's been really good going forward as well. I mean, Nori's been good going forward, but his work defensively needs mentioning because it's um Yeah. Yeah. But I think also a big shout out needs to go to Finn O'Mara because he's been a tank in defence. He's no, been he's, brilliant. Yeah, okay. he's he's full of energy. Any corner, any free kick, he's causing all sorts of mayhem. You know, he likes yeah, to wrap himself got, around the a way, post the, and everything. The way we've been going will be fat, but he's gonna be officially fan favourite Finn O'Mara, isn't he? Yeah. We're getting that designation. Dicko's well, Jock Wills has dropped Dicko. That's that's the really? title. Oh. Yeah, that's the title of his book. Uh, d- <laughs> <laughs> um, anything else we want to talk about? Or shall I bid us bid us farewell? Look, I've got one one thing. Of course, Fred, Freddie Leg. Okay. I just, just want to say, you oh, know, yeah, he yeah, just made the uh, under eighteen English schoolboys team, I believe. Yes, he has. That's right. That was in the place. Yes. No, that's not to be sneezed. That that's at, his, at this level. Mm. Well, well done. Yeah, exactly. Well, the last player who went and done that, Ben Ward, he ended up getting signed by Burnley. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, Freddie Leg is very good. You have to keep your eyes on those scouts, mate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, make sure Robbie, and Robbie him, trips him down the steps. And yeah, exactly. Oh, they all seem to be after TC at the moment, and he's yeah. always on the bench. <laughs> Wonder why. <laughs> yeah, is the scout on yet? Yeah? Right, you can get on the pitch. That's an aside, yeah. isn't it? Thursday week, Thursday week is the under twenty three's um, final. Is that final. Right? at, at oh, last? Yeah. Week? Yeah. That's right. Yeah, I'm going to commentate on that. Oh, so that's worth me- that's worth mentioning. And also tomorrow, apparently, there's going to be an announcement about um, coach travel to, to Ashford. Ashford. Ashford, yeah, I believe. Yeah, it would so. surprise me if they're putting on two coaches. Yeah, so watch out yeah. for that. G- well, Gino, I'm having, I'm having yeah. my own limo laid on. I believe. Yeah, I can imagine. I can imagine you're having your own limo, Addy. But Gina, so yeah. you and Gary, you're obviously going to have one of those coaches, aren't you? That's yeah. your dibs in one. Yep. Yeah. Which, which uh, who's allowed on? Yeah, is there anyone that's not allowed on? Anyone's welcome. Oh, okay. As long as, long as they bring a song request, they're f- they're allowed on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're not allowed to know, know like crap music. If they like crap music. They're off. Yeah. <laughs> It, it don't bother me. No, All no, sorts. No. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, strictly going back to a very handy thing that Adam's just mentioned about that under 23s final. I'm working. I cannot get off. So I'm not going to be able to be there. So you're doing commentary for it. It's, uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Doing commentary for the under 23 final over in Lansing. Excellent. Hmm. Being a man of leisure, I am. Um, I might. I'll see, see how it. Pans out. I quite I've, I've seen them a couple of times actually, and I really really enjoyed it. So it's a mm. it's a tempting prospect. Who do they get in the end? I kept on looking around to see who had won that semi final for the um, records. Who are they playing? New Haven. New, New Haven. New Haven. Yeah. Right. Okay. New Haven. So not Eastbourne. No, could... they lost on penalties. I think in the oh, end. All right. Okay. Adam, Adam, could we have a booth of you and Flat White? Could that be possible? Could that happen? Uh, not until I get some new equipment that allows me to have multiple microphones. 
So that's coming. Oh, that's a a second, secondary commentator, don't what being Jermaine Genus for the day. You look a bit like him. <laughs> I mean, you could you could be you could be my man man, man in the stand and be my Chris Kamara. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, unbelievable, Jeff. Has, any, has oh. any of any of you ever been to Lansing? No, no. Yeah. it's a it's a bit open <laughs> around three sides. It's a bit like the Ashford Ground, actually. Mm. So <laughs> it's going to be a cold one. Yeah, well, we I think we had a Sussex Senior Cup match there on a semi final. About it's been about eight or nine years ago now, and it's snowing, and it was in March, and it was bloody freezing. Honestly, yeah, <laughs> really cold. Well, it can't be any worse. Can't be any worse than Blackpool. <laughs> yeah, and one thing, as I tra- you, we moaned about the um, travel. Actually, the Lansing, the turn off for Lansing is before all the um, before the A twenty seven goes pear shaped. So yeah. it's yeah, not John, as bad a journey as I no, thought it might be. No, yeah, yeah, Wendy told me that. He yeah, John tell Wills you got that wrong last week. <laughs> yeah, so no, you no, can. That was Andy. Before. That was Andy. Tell yeah, Andy. Was it? Oh, okay. Wendy. Tell him. Oh, you turn. Yeah, you turn left just after those. Um, the nasty traffic lights where the accident happened with the airport. Yeah, so so my apologies to Lansing for that. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're on block you on Twitter now. Yeah. <laughs> I can't imagine there's anybody in Lansing who knows what Twitter is. <laughs> Ooh, well, for them, Twitter's a noise a bird makes. Yeah, exactly. They shall yeah. stop sending me sending me carrier pigeons. <laughs> well, he's, yeah. play, he's playing his role today, isn't he? Right. <laughs> Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, sorry I was late. No, you're never forgiven. You're never forgiven, Adam. Don't worry. Um, thank you, Adam, um, Matt, Windy John, Andy, and the lovely Gina. Thank you so much for coming on. And, um, well, I'll be seeing you at the game. Uh, and uh, three points Saturday. Yeah. 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 And if you can't make it, I'll talk all through with you oh cool we'll be there or be square on saturday yeah exactly exactly, exactly. Well, take care guys yeah cheers, cheers. Later. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you.